Banks, gentlemen, if you'd like to make a couple of comments, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, we're appreciative to be here, guys. Appreciate you guys coming out. You know, excited to be, you know, here uh, representing the SEC, you know, in Nashville. Um, Bowl's been awesome. You know, these guys are really taking care of us, and, you know, we're excited, you know, for um, a big game tomorrow. Yeah, same boat. Really grateful to be here. Been an awesome week. Um, more than anything, been, been incredible to continue to work with our guys as we continue to lay a foundation for what we're building in Knoxville. And these extra, extra 14, 15 practices have been absolutely monumental for, for us to continue to get better and, and for, for the young guys developing in, in a lot of ways for us for the first time to see these young guys that we hadn't necessarily seen all year and, and be able to get a chance to work with them as much as anything. But obviously, time to get going, ready to play tomorrow, and, and really excited to be here. OK, we'll open it up for questions. And once again, if you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Austin Price, VolQuest.com. This is for both you guys. Working together this year, what have you learned to appreciate about each other? You know, I've known Coach Goes for a lot of years. You know, I've always respected him, the way he worked, his work ethic. Um, and, and it's been nothing but the same. Everything I thought he would be, he's been. You know, the, the way he handles the kids, you know, how important they are to him, not just on the field, but off the field. So, you know, I did, and like I told you guys, most of you guys I've seen before, you know, to me, life is extremely short. You know, you want to go to work with guys that you love and trust. You know, he's definitely one of those guys, you know, phenomenal football coach, you know, but, but definitely even a better man. So. Um, it, it's been it's been an honor, you know, just to watch him work and get that offense going. And you know, I expected it so much, and it, it's been great so far. Yeah, same boat. Um, we're just going to sit here, compliment each other here for <laughs> for the next two minutes. But um, obviously, super super fortunate when when the the guy on the other side is is all about the team and and all about the players. And and Coach Banks and I go way back, and super super fortunate to get a chance to work with with one of the best men I've ever been around. Um, the way he handles the staff, the, the defense, it's probably not the easiest job in the country to be the defensive coordinator here. But um, humility and, and work ethic and just the way, the way that Coach Banks has been to me since 2012, uh, been the same person, just continuing to pour into the kids. And, and you guys have seen the results that continue to get better on both sides. And, but coming to work every day and knowing that somebody's got your back that's that's in charge of the other side of the ball is is monumental and and uh, couldn't couldn't think of a better counterpart on the other side been incredible Patrick Brown with 24 7 sports coach banks how have you seen uh, your two transfers in the secondary Kamal and, and Brandon how have they kind of progressed over course of the season, but also this month as well, getting ready for this game. Yeah, K Kamal's had a good um, a good camp. You know, he's worked really hard. You know, obviously, anytime you transfer in, you know, and really for all the guys, you know, it's a new system, but particularly, um, you know, for Kamal, you know, who hadn't really had a, a great body of work, you know, coming from a junior college. So, uh, but he's gotten better. You know, he really has. Um, Turnage, you know, again, same thing, you know, a little bit obviously bigger background, you know, based on where he came from. Um, so I don't know if the learning curve was as steep for him. Um, but both guys have gotten tremendously better, you know, and I think their future is bright, both of them. Uh, Coach Banks, Jimmy Helms, Sports Animal, Knoxville. Tennessee, I think, still leads the nation in first quarter points scored. And I wonder from your position, does that impact the way you call a game defensively when the offense scores 28 points, 21 points in the first quarter? Yeah, it's good. You know, you like you like for those guys to do what they do and, you know, obviously put them guys in situations where, you know, you can make them a little bit more one-dimensional because they got to throw it or do whatever they're trying to do to try to get back in the game. So, I mean, it's awesome. I know a lot of guys talk about, you know, you know, playing, being a defensive coordinator, a fast-paced team, but, you know, it's a lot of benefits to being that, and you just explain one of them. You know, these guys score a ton of points, and, you know, it's an exciting brand of football, and it gives us an opportunity to pin our ears back and, and, and hopefully get after the quarterback. Not everybody at once.
Coach Golish, uh, Coach Albert just said Cade's not going to play tomorrow. So just what have you seen from Dane Davis and Jeremiah Crawford over these last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think a little bit easier because you got three weeks to prepare um, in, in terms of knowing that that you're going to be the guy. Or in our in our situation, both those guys are going to get a chance to play. Um, Dane has played a bunch. We tried to get JJ involved late in the year. Um, you know. JJ is interesting because he didn't get here till the end of July. So for him, this is all so new. Uh, I think he's done a really good job of taking strides. One, learning how to play within the system, learning the the pace of the game. Um, obviously, the schematic part of it. Uh, I think he's taken huge strides. We're excited about his future. Dane has been the same guy every day. Uh, you know, I think Dane came into the season expecting to be a guy we count on. He's worked that way. Um, he's got to continue to get better. Um, but I do think as the season's gone on, he's become the best version of himself, a level of confidence. He started against Alabama and Tuscaloosa and I thought did a really fair job of hanging in there and, and continuing to get better as the game's gone. Not easy to play O-line, uh, not easy to play O-line in the SEC. I think he, he did a good job of continuing to get better as the season went. I'm excited for both those guys. It's been huge for both of them to have all the one split in the one reps the last three weeks. Obviously, we were hoping Cade could play. Um, still nursing the ankle. Um, we'll see where, where his future ends up. But but we're, those guys are ready. We're excited for them. And, and hopefully, both will get a chance to rotate as the game goes and kind of get a feel for what's going on. Uh, but I don't know that, that I'm super concerned about it. Obviously, Cade's a huge loss. He's played so much football for us. His leadership, all the things that he's done, um, those two guys will be big. And having three weeks to prepare has, has really, really been good for both of them. Hey, Alex, over here. Uh, Vince Ferrar, 99.1, the sports channel in Knoxville. A number of guys on your side of the ball have made the decision to return to Tennessee next season. Can you quick hit some of those guys, Tillman, Hooker, um, you know, all those guys, the, your tight ends, on maybe what's the next step for them and what you're sort of looking for even in this game from those guys that, that decided to return? Yeah. Vince, in a lot of ways, super humbling that those guys want to come back, I, I think, said. Hendon um, obviously have a future. We're still waiting on, on one more here. But have a future at the next level. Um, I think it's a credit to Coach Hype and what he's been able to do in terms of creating a culture where guys want to be around, um, guys are having fun. Um, Hendon, to start, Hendon has been nothing short of a program changer for us, a culture setter. Um, and I know those are cliche terms, but that's what he is. He shows up, same guy every day. Um, in a lot of ways, makes, makes you better as a coach because he's, he's the same guy every day. Um, positive attitude, you know, you ask him, you good with running option here? I am, knowing he's going to get hit. You know, like just everything you'd ever want from the way he approaches his, his daily preparation to the way he, he handles the guys in the locker room, um, everybody likes Hendon. Um, and as coaches, it it's, gives you a level of confidence going into a game. Um, again, I think the fact that all of those guys wanted to come back just tells you we're doing something right. Does it result in wins and losses? Having better on guys results in wins and losses. But from a recruiting standpoint, from a who we are as a team standpoint, that tells you we're heading in the right direction. And like I said, that's really, really humbling um, as a coach. Cedric, obviously, the production would, would be really, really hard to replace. Uh, he's a guy that's through the first three, four games, I don't think, think we did a good job getting the football to him. As he earned the touches, he obviously showed that he's one of the best receivers in the country. I think one of the best receivers, certainly in the SEC. Um, another offseason in this, he's got a ton of growth still. Another offseason in this, I would anticipate him to have a, a really, really big year. Huge for us to have him back, especially with graduating the other two guys at the receiver spots. Princeton, Jacob coming back. Um, I think they knew they needed another year, hopefully Jacob for two in the system, they've really gotten better every week as well. Really proud of where those guys are at. I think they've got huge strides for us at that position to continue to grow, both as pass catchers and run blockers and pass protection. Just overall, 
I think we, we were not uber prepared to come into the season, and those guys have done a good job getting themselves there and splitting the reps at that position, and, and hopefully we can become more multiple as both those guys continue to grow and evolve within the system. Um, like I said, hopefully still, still have one more that we're waiting on, and, and um, that would give us a really good nucleus coming back a year from now. Rick Rousseau, WVLT, Knoxville. Coaches, uh, for either or both, uh, certainly a different situation this time last year. How fun, how rewarding has it been for you guys to help lead these guys to this position, to this bowl game? It's, uh, I, I think for us a, as a program, the, the ability to get the extra time to practice is one thing. For these guys to get a reward at the end to come to a place like this, a city like this, for a lot of them home or at least close to home, um, be in a venue like this to, to stay for a week, obviously be able to play at Nissan Stadium. This crew has been through a lot um, and, and not to overhype what they've been through, but, but there was a really tough change for them in January, late January, a year ago. Um, I think I said it earlier in the year, the guys that chose to stay, the guys that chose to push through the hard, this is the reward part of it. Now, at the end of the day, the, the season is what the season is. The record is what the record is. Our expectations are to continue to get better and, and continue to improve as we go. But I couldn't be more humbled to, to be here with this crew. They've been through a lot. You go through a coaching change in January, a bunch of guys that they didn't pick to play for. Um, and uh, I give them a ton of credit. They've hung through it. Um, they've played extremely hard. They've grown to love each other. They've grown to play for each other. If we can continue to stay on that track, it's just, it, it's an awesome reward for them. For obviously for us as coaches, it's great. Our families, it's great. For us, it's a game week. We've approached it that way. Um, that part is what it is. It, it's part of the process. But for, for these guys that have stuck it out, pushed through the hard, continue to become the best versions of themselves. Give them a lot of, lot of credit. And you talk about adversity, they fought through it, uh, both on the field and, and in the off season. There's a lot of people and a lot of noise around Knoxville that, that maybe told them you shouldn't be here. And those guys that stayed, man, I give them a lot of credit because it has not been easy and we've made it hard, uh, but we've made it hard on purpose. And, and I couldn't be more proud. And like I said, I use the term humbled, just walking in here, what, what an incredible experience to be a part of, of a bunch of guys that really have changed the traje trajectory of the program in a lot of ways because they shouldn't be here, they weren't supposed to be here, and, and if they learn anything that you just keep fighting, put your head down, you don't know what the end result is going to be, you just control your process every day. That, that's what this squad is, and, and named a couple of them, but the Hendon Hookers of the world, the Cedrics of the world, man, oh man, we've got a bunch of tough kids in that locker room, and I don't know if it results in a win or not, but, but it's certainly the next step for us as a program to continue to build and evolve to where we want to go. Uh, Alex, two things. Number one, what's the most impressive thing you have seen Hendon Hooker do on the field? Uh, yeah, I think just his toughness, mental and physical both. Um, you always have a chance when the ball's in his hand. You know, some critical times throughout the year, um, we've tried to put the ball in his hands. Uh, and obviously, he touches the ball in every play. But I feel uber comfortable that with him having the ball when it's on the line, that he's going to make something happen with it, uh, whether it's his ability to run with it, his ability to get the ball where it's got to go with, with proper timing and ball placement, um, his toughness, mental toughness, physical toughness. That kid's a winner, he believes in himself, believes in his teammates. And uh, as a coach, all you want at the end is, is to have a chance to win. I feel like with Hendon, you always feel like you have a chance to win. So just his toughness. Secondly, what do you think is, if you could pinpoint one reason why you think your offense has been so successful in the first quarter? I think that part is, is, is really simple. I, I think 
it's hard to simulate the tempo from a practice standpoint. I think it takes takes teams, especially in year one. Um, it takes teams. Coaches can harp on it. Guys, guys gotta obviously believe in in a. It will be that fast. Uh, I think that's part of the element of what we do. Um, is is that it takes defenses, particularly the players. Uh, a little bit of time to actually get into a rhythm and see how it's going. Um, you know, I think that's only going to get harder as you go because obviously defensive play callers get used to it, um, players get used to it. But I think it jumps on you a little bit, um, and uh, that's part of part of the element of what we do. It's hard to simulate in practice at the end of the day. We've got time for two more questions. This gentleman and then this gentleman. Coach Banks, Vince Ferrar, 99.1, the sports animal. You mentioned earlier, you know, life is short, take advantage of the moments. With today, kids being so willing to transfer, maybe having people in their ear, do you spend much time sort of recruiting your own player or do you kind of let the culture take over that and then tackle situations as they come? Yeah, I think it's the latter. You know, I think culture has always been important, but I think in this day and age, it's even more important. You know, in every situation is different. You know, some guys leave for the right reasons. You know, maybe some don't. You know, but at the end of the day, I think if your culture is solid, you know, I think you'll end up having more guys that, that want to be there than don't. You know, but every kid has a choice to make. You know, that's just how life is. You know, we think what we're doing here, you know, it is challenging. You know, but if you stick around and you work hard, it'll be extremely rewarding. So. Um, I think we'll tackle every issue as it comes, you know, but for the most part, we just lean on our culture, you know, and those kids understanding it, how much we love them and how hard we're going to work them, you know, because of the greater good. Alex, you talked about some of the guys that, that left, you know, and then some of the guys that stayed. Darnell Wright was one of those guys that stayed and has kind of been real steady at left tackle. Can you just talk about the year he's had and, and the growth you've seen? Yeah, I, I think Darnell was was a guy early that that stuck to his guns and, and said, I'm going a, to I'm a, I'm a go through the hard. And, uh, could, you know, when you ask him why, he, he couldn't imagine leaving his teammates. Um, I, he's been super, super steady there, continue to get better. I think for him, just having a home, having a position, having a guy like Coach Ellerby, who genuinely has poured everything into him, that's all Darnell needed was somebody to continue to pour into him, believe in him so he can believe in himself. He has not had it easy. I, I think really publicized his, his background, and he probably wasn't supposed to be here at this time. And, um, and he's continued <coughs> to push through it, continue to get better. Um, from a fundamental standpoint, from an understanding of the game, just like we talked about from the tempo side of it, defense is getting used to it. Playing O-line in this deal is, is, is a tough, tough deal in terms of just how fast it's happening, how fast you got to be able to react and adjust. I think he's done a really, really good job. He's done a really good job in pass protection. He's gotten more comfortable in the run game. You know, we've used him a ton on the perimeter and some screen game stuff. He's super athletic. He's only going to continue to get better as he gets stronger and more confident. Um, I think he's been really, really steady for us. You talk about our, our line. He's been that steady, steady guy on the left side that's, that's really, really helped us. He's played through some, some injury stuff and been really, really tough. More, more impressive with Darnell than anything else is who he is when he walks in the building now. He's got a smile. He asks you how you're doing. He finally feels comfortable. It took him about six months to get there. Uh, and like I said, a credit to Glenn, a credit to Coach Hype, making that environment right. But he finally feels like he's himself and can be who he is, which is a happy-go-lucky, fun dude that on game day is going to try to put people in the ground, which has been awesome for us. Gentlemen, thank you very much, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Thank guys. you guys.